All right, thanks for joining us this afternoon. My name is Tommy Ferguson. I'm the executive director of Capital City Village. We're a local nonprofit that helps Austin seniors age well in their own homes through a mix of programs and services. One of our programs uh, is one aimed at health and wellness through nutrition. And this is brought to us by the students at the UT Nutritional Sciences program. And so I'm going to turn it over to them. They're gonna talk a little bit about grocery shopping and meal prepping. So go ahead and take it away. We will be recording this session uh, for future use on our website. Okay, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we hope you all are doing well and staying safe. Uh, so to kind of introduce ourselves, we are undergraduate nutritional science students at the University of Texas in Austin. Uh, and today we're hoping to talk to you guys a little bit about grocery shopping and meal prepping and hopefully providing some tips and tricks on uh, both of those things. So to kind of get started, we wanted to go over some of our learning objectives. So these are things that we want uh, to sort of get across to you guys and hopefully have you guys be able to do by the end of the meeting or by the end of our presentation. So for our first uh, learning objectives, hopefully by the end of the meeting, uh, we can get you guys to recall some of the five major food groups that are needed in order to build a properly balanced meal. And that can go a long way with meal prepping or especially when you're uh, grocery shopping to kind of deciding what you guys wanna, uh, want to uh, pick out. And we'll go into more detail about that in a little bit. Uh, and then our second uh, learning objective will be, we're hoping that you guys will be able to identify two grocery options that are easy to prepare and that can be prepared days in advance. So that kind of goes along with the whole meal prepping idea. Um, and then finally, we'll be talking a little bit about um, our grocery store apps. So we're hoping by the end of this, we'll be able to get you guys to use your handheld device or or uh, laptop or iPad to download uh, and navigate your local grocery store app or maybe a main chain like HEV or Kroger and identify any weekly ads to find inspiration for some home cooked meals or meal prepping. Okay, so um, we wanted to start off with a few discussion questions um, just to warm us up a little bit. Um, first one being, how do you usually grocery shop? So do you go to your local grocery store? Does someone do the grocery stop shopping for you? I know personally for me, um, I just go to my local HEV and I typically don't even have a list. I kind of just, you know, have a couple of things in my head and grab as I go, even though that's not a great way if you want to save money, because I typically grab a little bit too much stuff um, just as I go. But um, I know um, Mary just jumped on. I don't know if you're comfortable sharing with us if you have any or uh, what's your experience like grocery shopping, probably pre-COVID. If not, it's okay if you don't want to speak, but. Oh, Marie, that's Marie. Uh, Marie. Yeah, if you want to unmute and uh, make a few comments, feel free to do that. I can, and. If not, it's totally okay. Um, but the second question we wanted to just go over was how has grocery shopping changed for you due to COVID? Um, I know personally, uh, especially like in the height of COVID, like last year, it's changed dramatically, at least for my family, especially like I had to do a lot of the grocery shopping for like my grandparents. And if I wasn't available, they would thankfully, uh, you know, HEB did the curbside option. So they would sometimes have to like schedule it like a week out and, um, you know, plan that out, get all the grocery shopping from that service and pick it up, um, which was super convenient for the circumstances, but, you know, obviously not ideal. Um, our last question for our discussion is how do you usually prepare meals? So being, you know, do you microwave your meals? Do you, does someone else cook for you? Um, you know, is some, do you prepare everything with the stovetop? As a college student, um, a lot of the stuff I do is with microwave, I'm not gonna lie, but um, if- Because they covered up my, where I can turn the sound up and down. That's okay. Yeah, I guess um, I can answer and just say that for myself, um, I sort of grocery shop sporadically. Okay. And I that uh, a lot of our folks in Capital City Village have used the curbside pickup 
um, and use that a little bit more frequently for, uh, for just grocery shopping during COVID. Um, and as far as meal prep, um, I, I'm fortunate enough that my husband does most of the meal prep, but uh, Marie, how do you, what do you, uh, what are your sort of standards as far as what you usually do for day-to-day uh, -day meal prep? Well, I go through the uh, HEB, um, they list all the things that are available and I go yes. and pick out what I want and I have it delivered. But it's not because of COVID. I was doing this. My family wanted me to do it like a couple of years ago. Oh, really? Yeah. So you do you like the service? Yes, very much. That's awesome. Well, I'm glad I, you're already accustomed to it. <laughs> yeah, I would like it better if they could still come in and set it on my dining room table <laughs> for me because I'm not very tall. Yeah, of course. <laughs> well, that's awesome. I'm glad to hear that you're utilizing that service that they do. Um, it's amazing that they offer it. So that's cool. Yeah. I Once in a while, I get something that, you know, is not exactly what I wanted. But for the most part, I'm very happy with it. I'm glad to hear. Awesome. And, and I can refuse um, to let them substitute. Because one thing I did find, say like if I ordered paper towels mm -hmm. and I ordered Viva, yeah. substitute their brand. Oh, okay. And so like it might be a price never, difference? Yeah, it's never another brand. Mm. Their brand. <laughs> That's how they get you. <laughs> yeah. And then my, my son-in-law uh, lives downtown and uh, for 20 years, he's been bringing me uh, a goodie bag every Sunday morning. Oh, wow. That's and, so sweet. Uh, yeah. And usually I'm really happy, you know, with what I get, uh -huh. but just like anything, um, someone else is picking it out for you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, it, you know, ideally, you would want to be the person just doing all your, you know, own stuff. But and if I order a certain brand, if I don't, if they don't have that brand, I really don't want them. Which I can, I can um, set it up before I order that uh -huh. um, those substitutions. You know, so okay. I, on one item, select no subs. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I okay. Better since I've been. And attention to that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad you're, you know, overall navigating the service pretty well. It seems like, you know, it's working out. Awesome. I, think that I have had a delivery from everybody who does that, like all the different grocery stores and, um, you know, like Whole Foods, um, Capital, Noah, um, Walmart. <laughs> Uh, I've never had Walmart delivered that. I think that's the only one I haven't. Oh, really? Okay. Market was what I was trying to think. <laughs> <laughs> well, our our presentation is probably gonna is mostly focusing on HEB. You've done HEB or? Okay, great, awesome. So we're gonna get into on this next slide how to uh, download the app onto your mobile device if you have one. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Yes. Yeah, so. Um, and they play this video, it's a short little clip. And basically if you go to your app store on the mobile device where you download everything, you're gonna type in HEB into the search bar. Okay, my problem is this. I do okay. not have that kind of phone. Which phone do you have? Jitterbug and then my landline. Okay, well, um, do you by chance also use uh, like, or do you have a computer? Because we all, we're also gonna cover that and how to, just search it up on your I'm on a computer right now talking to you. Okay. Oh yeah. Great. <laughs> so um, we're going to cover that also. Um, so uh, just for the next couple slides, we're going to go into the iPhone. And then um, after that, we're going to cover it, just how to pop it up in your website. Is that all right? It's just everyone assumes that I have one and everyone assumes that I text. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll definitely cover the website and um, just bear with me for a couple slides. <laughs> okay, thank you. 
no problem. Awesome. So um, again, uh, once you download or type in the HEV and you press get on the top right corner, there's going to be a spinning little bar. It's going to want you to confirm the app. You're going to press twice on your lock screen to confirm. And once it's all done processing and downloading, it should pop up an open button on the top right corner and you click that and you should be ready to go. All right, and so I'll be going over how to navigate the app. Um, the main thing is that you can switch it from curbside to pickup to delivery. If you click on the top left, it gives you the three different shopping options. You can customize the time for pickup. You can customize your address for delivery, um, or you can set it for in-store and you can locate your most, your local HEB grocery. As you scroll down on the main page and on the website as well, you'll see different categories. Um, sometimes they'll have recipe ideas. Sometimes they'll just give you certain similar foods, like all Italian food. And then as you keep going down, you'll kind of come across coupons, the actual categories of food, such as dairy, meat, grocery, um, grocery items, cleaning. And at the very bottom, you'll find the weekly ad. On this video, we'll go over how to use some coupons on the website and on the app. Um, there will be a tab where you can actually click on to access all of the currently available HEB coupons. There's a filter option that will allow you to browse different categories of coupons. Let's say we want to do cleaning materials or you want to do dairy products. We'll let you kind of filter out what you're looking for. Um, and as you scroll through, we can take a look at what ads or I'm sorry, what coupons are available. And then when we come across one, you can actually open it right here. We're looking at black beans. It gives you a bit of information. It tells you when the coupon expires, um, what items are applicable for the coupon. So here, if you buy one of these eligible items that we're looking at scrolling through left to right, um, you will get a free can of beans, which is listed right here. Um, and any, you can pick one of the three options here. And so it kind of makes it really simple. You're not shopping around on your own and having to find out what applies. If you hit the clip option or the clip button. It's essentially like clipping the coupon in real life out of the coupon book. Um, it's just kind of their way of saving the coupon to your account on the website or on the app. So we can keep scrolling. If we come across, say, another coupon that we'd like, let's use this Kellogg cereal as an example. We say, okay, we want some Kellogg's this week. So we'll go ahead and get this coupon. We see a flavor we like, we clip this one, and then we'll also add it into our account. And if you want to take a look at maybe one of the items specifically that actually applies to the coupon, you can check information on the website, such as the nutrition label. Um, it'll give you the flavor and you can actually add it directly to your cart for your order um, or add it to your list if you plan on going in store to shop. When you access the list, it actually shows where the items are in the store, what aisle they're on, or what location if you happen to be shopping in person. Um, this is useful in case you are someone who likes to just make lists. You can use this as a list within the store itself. As you can see here, it functions as essentially a checkoff as well. So as you go through the store and shop, you can mark what you picked up and what you haven't. And then as we go back into the filters for the coupons, we can change it to popular. This also just shows you what everybody else happens to be using. If there's any really good deals that a lot of people are capitalizing on, you can find out and you can get it for yourself. Right here, we have one for craft cheese. So we'll go and add that to my shopping list as well. And then the last thing I'm gonna show you guys is when you view the list itself, um, you can actually go ahead and see all of the applicable items again that we've added and we'll automatically attach that to the order for you. And lastly, if you hit the scan coupon in store, it'll access your device's camera. If you happen to come across a coupon hanging off of one of the shelves you wanna use, you can do that. And then if you hit the coupon barcode option, this actually couples all of your clipped coupons together into one scan when you're checking out. If you're doing a curbside or online order, it will automatically apply. But this is useful if you happen to be in store and you're checking out at the register.
And then here, lastly, I'm just gonna go over how we can place an order. And um, we're gonna double check, right, for this one that we want to set it as a curbside. It will allow us to pick a pickup time, um, morning, afternoon, or evening, any day of the week that works best for you. Sometimes it's competitive, but you usually can find a, a date if you use the app, it gives you all the available time slots. Once you're in there, you can go to the account tab. Um, we'll access our list, which shows all of the items we've added. And then if we go ahead and hit add to cart, it will go ahead and put all the items into an order for us. And it'll give us our final kind of checkout screen. It goes over all of the items we've selected and the coupons and savings that we'll get with them. Um, I know Marie brought this up earlier about the substitutions. And so this is something I like to mention too. If you would like something to be that item only, let's say you really like the Kellogg cereal, you don't want to substitute that for anything and you want just that flavor, you want to go ahead and uncheck allow substitutions. That just means if they don't have it, they won't charge you for it and they'll refund you what that would have cost and they won't get you a different product in its place. But let's say we're okay with the broccoli head. But we're also okay with broccolini. If they don't have broccoli heads, you can get that to be substituted. Um, and like Marie was saying, um, the shopper will just pick out another option that's similar-ish to what we originally wanted. Once you're all ready, you go down to the bottom, you hit checkout, it will collect your payment information and then it completes your order. Okay, now that we've gone over and explored a little bit of the HEB app, we're gonna do um, some exploration of the unique features that the HEB website has. So Marie, this one's for you. <laughs> So if you go to the website, heb.com, this can be reached from any computer, um, phone or tablet. And when you go to that website, you'll pull up this home screen. And this home screen has menu items along the top, as you can see, and we're gonna first explore the weekly ad tab. So if you click on the weekly ad tab, you'll be able to explore all the items that are on sale that week and anything that HEB is promoting. Under the weekly ad tab, uh, you'll, you'll be able to see filter for has coupon. Um, if you click on that filter option, then it'll pull up everything that's on sale or has a coupon that's presented with the items. Uh, you can also use the search bar in the top right hand side of the screen um, if you're looking for a specific item that you'd like to search for if, in, to see if it has a coupon. So there's that search bar in the top right hand corner. Back on the home screen, you can click on the recipes tab. And if you click on this recipe tab and scroll down, it'll take you to the recipe finder. So here at the recipe finder, you can explore a bunch of different recipes that HEB has picked out and has provided for you. Once you find a recipe that you would like to try, or maybe it sounds interesting, you can use the add to list feature where the, the arrow is pointing to, to add all of the items that are needed to complete that recipe directly into your cart for checkout. So let's discuss how to build a properly balanced meal. Um, a balanced diet in differing kinds of foods, quantities, and proportions can provide your body the nutrients it needs. This image indicates how a variety of fruits, vegetables, dairy, grains, protein, and fluid are an important part of the balance. And on the next slide here, you can see that when you're trying to build a balanced plate, adding more vegetables than protein and carbs is important. And additionally, alternating foods to diversify nutrient consumption is also um, good for you. So it kind of limits overconsumption. And this would mean that instead of eating just red meat every day for your protein source, you would also choose things like fish or beans, eggs. There's also tofu. So anything of the like, um, instead of just eating red meat every single day. And then some tips for a balanced meal include limiting the consumption of foods that provide little or no nutritional value. Um, so that would be limiting empty calories like chips and soda and eating and consuming nutrient dense foods rather than that. Um, it would also be a better bang for your buck in a way because it would fill you up more and improve your overall health. Um, also nutrient dense foods don't always have to be more expensive. There are canned and frozen versions of fruits and vegetables that you can purchase and incorporate into your diet. And adding colors through different fruits and vegetables is also a good way to consume antioxidants, minerals, and vitamins, which is also very important for one's diet. 
So listed on this slide are examples of different foods that you can include in your meals to cover the five main food groups. So some really great and healthy examples of protein are like chicken breast or eggs. There's a whole lot of really colorful and um, diverse fruits and vegetables that you can eat. Um, and some examples of really filling and healthy grains are like whole grain oatmeal, brown rice, whole wheat bread, things like that. Um, and to incorporate dairy in a healthy way into your diet, you could try fat-free or low-fat milk and cheese and yogurt. There are a lot of different meals that are both easy to prepare and also nutritious, filling, and delicious. So some of my favorite examples are chicken and veggie sheet pan, potato, egg, and cheese breakfast tacos, which are my absolute favorite, and also one pot pasta dinner. So if the audience would like to answer what is your favorite go-to easy to make meal? It's okay if nobody has, uh, nobody wants to answer. Well, I, I have an air fryer. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, so, and I do like to cook in it. That's great. I think foods made in air fryers are a lot healthier, like they're less greasy. Have you noticed that? And I eat low carb, so um, I don't like bread things and like that. I oh. eat the plain. That's great. That's a great healthy option. Yeah, I am diabetic and it keeps my diabetes in good shape. Oh, for sure, for sure. Marie, oh. what kind of things do you like to cook in your air fryer? I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, you can take something frozen and cook it. I don't, I have uh, on my computer, I have a list of things that you can cook in the air fryer and about how long it should take. And um, I'm to the point now where I very rarely ever have to look at it. I, I probably use that at least three or four times a week. That sounds super useful. I should, I want to get an air fryer so that this has inspired me. I love it. I just truly love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah. Um, and you don't need all the breading and and stuff like that because the way it cooks, um, you, you don't need that to keep the flavor in. Do you find that it's just as like delicious as like fried food? Yes, I do. Okay, that's great. Okay, that's definitely inspired me to invest in air fryer. Yes, I've collected quite a few recipes that um, go together with that and it worked out really well. What's your, what's your favorite recipe that you've made so far? Um, I probably uh, chicken thighs. Oh, okay. Yeah, because they can be, they're very tasty because they're not um, the white meat like the chicken breast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? but uh, the thighs aren't, and uh, they have more flavor. Yeah, I, I do find that dark meat is way tastier. <laughs> yeah, it really is. I never knew that, and um, my oldest daughter would never eat uh, chicken breast, but really? she would eat the drumsticks or the wings or mm -hmm. any part of it, and uh, I'm like, why do you do that? I mean, everybody eats the chicken breast. That's good for you. And she said, because I don't like it. <laughs> what are you going to do? That's understandable. I was definitely like that as a kid, even now, honestly. Yeah. Um, I, one thing that I think is really funny about both of my daughters is that when they were little, they loved spinach. And I would cook it with little pieces of bacon and a little bit of onion yeah and of course you'd have to use oil <laughs> and um my kids loved spinach wow you must have made it really well then because <laughs> when they went to school they found out that kids don't like spinach <laughs> <laughs> yeah I can imagine that would be a shock <laughs> yeah yeah and in fact, um, my younger one said to me, 
why didn't you tell me kids don't eat spinach? <laughs> because then you wouldn't eat it. <laughs> yeah. Did they still like to eat spinach? Yeah. They even like kale. Oh, wow. I'm surprised. Kale is not that palatable to everyone. Um, if, you, if you kind of saute it with um, onion and, and um, um, just a little bit of oil, and if you have any leftover bacon, you throw a little bit of that in there, and it's, it's really good. It's really a lot like spinach. If you cook it like spinach, then it's <laughs> like spinach. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> um, do we want to move on to cooking? Um, okay, so some examples of some versatile items that can make meal prepping really easy include things that are already pre-made or frozen or canned, like pre-made rotisserie chicken, um, frozen vegetables, canned tomatoes, um, canned beans and vegetables, things like that. Almost everything I eat fresh, and if I can't get it fresh, frozen is a very good um, substitute because uh, say like fish, mm -hmm. they catch it in the water and they process it and put it in the freezer thing. So it's, yeah, and you know, the fresh, in the fresh department, truthfully, it could be there for two or three days. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and so they say that, that actually the uh, frozen is probably better for you. I can imagine, yeah. You, you never know how long things have been sitting out, so. Yeah, yeah. yes. And I'm one who checks the dates and. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's definitely safe. <laughs> no grocery shopping with me because it takes too long. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's better to be safe than sorry, so I think it's great that you check everything. Yeah, well, I'm a diabetic with kidney disease, so. Um, if I want to live, I have to do these things. And it's it's just second nature now. That's good. I'm glad you found a system that works for you. <laughs> well, the, the thing is that if you if you want to live a good life, you have to eat the good food. For sure. Yes. And it it was really strange for me in the beginning to eat low carb, mm -hmm. but my um, for my diabetes are probably better than any one of you. Probably, honestly. <laughs> yeah, uh, my doctor said that just looking at my numbers, you'd never know I had diabetes. Wow, that's amazing. I even, just to see if I could do it, um, got it down where I did not have to take insulin, and I went about six weeks, but I told my doctor, said, that's too strict. I, I yeah. And she said, I know, I just wanted to see if you could do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing what you can do if you're um, dedicated enough. Yeah, for sure. Okay, well, speaking of frozen fruits and vegetables, we have um, some cooking tips that we would like to share with you all. So um, one of them is to be sure to use separate cutting boards for meat and vegetables. Um, this will help prevent cross-contamination when you're cooking. Another tip includes lining your baking sheets with foil to, uh, to make for an easy mess-free cleanup. And like Marie and Christine were just talking about, uh, using frozen fruits and vegetables is very beneficial. Um, like you all had mentioned, because like sometimes they're just fresher than, than like the fresh fruit and vegetables there at the store, but it also allows for a minimal uh, prep. So um, does anyone have any cooking tips they'd like to share with us? Uh, I can share one with an air fryer. Um, so if you, if you line the bottom of your air fryer with aluminum foil, you can pour a bit of water in there and use it as a steamer if needed, if you're making something that just requires some steaming. I mean, it's pretty easy to clean up since you just take the aluminum foil out. And sometimes when uh, I heat up um, uh, frozen shrimp, um, sometimes when I do that, that 
I, um, I have a little memory loss. <laughs> I, I think it just kicked in. Oh, okay, well, um, if you remember it later, you can always just um, like speak up and we'll be like super happy to hear about it. <laughs> okay. Do, do y'all uh, cook vegetables in the, in the air fryer? Pardon me? Do you cook things like Brussels sprouts in your air fryer? You can, yes, you can. You can? Uh-huh. Um, besides the grill plate, uh, there's um, a, like a, a square pan that you could put liquids and stuff in. And there's- Okay, that I wondered, I don't have one. I was thinking of getting one, but I would want to use vegetables in it. So um, you can do that, okay. There are different ways you could do that. You could, like you said, add a little water or chicken broth or whatever you wanted. Um, you also can like grill um, a lot of vegetables and fruits that are really good that way. Thank you. I'm probably not supposed to do this, but sometimes when I don't want to um, cook a big batch of something, and uh, so I'll put a little square of uh, tin foil in there and put my food on that. And when it's done, I just throw away the tin foil. I don't have to clean it. <laughs> I didn't know you could put tin foil in there. I think I'm going to have to get an air fryer. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I never ever read or heard that you could do it. I just did it on my own. So. Thank you. <laughs> okay, well next I think we're gonna create a jam board. So we're gonna build a meal prep plan together. And so if you all would like to say out loud or type into the chat some ideas you would have like for, a, like for meal prepping, we'll go ahead and we'll type it into Jamboard. And so on Jamboard, as you can see on the screen, it, it's just this, um, site where we can post all of our ideas together. So um, does anyone have any ideas for meal prep? One of my favorite meals um, is always making a spinach salad with pear, cranberries, and pecans. I do the same thing except I use strawberries. <laughs> and I make my own dressing that has no calories and no carbs. Okay, so... But it, it, you know, the, it just tastes so good that um, even when I go to a restaurant, if they have something like that, um, I, I will order it. And I have a little container that I can carry in my purse with my own salad dressing. And it changes the, the calorie count and, and carb count. So I like to do that. I keep some made in my refrigerator. That's a really smart idea. And that sounds like a really good um, meal, the spinach salad with the strawberries and pecans. Um, does anyone have any other ideas for meal preps? We had mentioned this one earlier, but uh, beef stir fry with vegetables. Oh yeah. Ground beef stir fry with vegetables. What I'm looking for is a really good sauce for that. I've, I've tried a few and they were like, okay, but not really what I was looking for. <laughs> I, know I always like me, to make a, oh, sorry, go ahead, Samir. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I know for me, one of my go-tos is uh, I like to bake salmon and then I have an air fryer as well. Uh, and I like to cut up some potatoes and then season them with some like garlic and oregano and I'll uh, put them in the air fryer. So some salmon and some potatoes and then I'll uh, steam some vegetables and that's, a, that's been kind of my like great like meal prep and it hits kind of all the food groups as well. So definitely something that's, that's good to have. Oh yeah, that's another idea like adding fish to the air fryer. I hadn't thought about that. Baked salmon with potato, garlic, oregano, vegetables. Okay, anybody else? 
Tommy had mentioned it. in the, the chat a little while ago that uh, she likes to do salad with arugula, salmon, or tofu. Yeah, absolutely. And then a light, usually a vinaigrette sort of dressing, something that's uh, fairly light. But uh, yeah, it's a great go-to. On Pinterest, there are hundreds of um, salad dressing recipes that um, for the dressing that you don't have to have um, all the calories and stuff that are in the store-bought ones. So if you make your own, um, I, to me, that's the only way to go. <laughs> One of the uh, meal preps I like to do is just doing like a pesto pasta and you can sub out pasta for different types. Like instead of just doing um, like an egg pasta, you could do like vegetable pasta um, to lower carb counts. But I'll use, I just like that one because it's really easy. I just mince some garlic. I'll cook it for maybe about a minute or two, add the butter, add the pesto, and then add some cooked pasta in. So it's really quick. The prep is really minimal. I um, mean, you could add, you know, grilled chicken breast or just other vegetables or like blisters some grape, um, grape tomatoes and put that in there too. I always like that one because it's really fast. Yeah, that one sounds really good too. All of these sound really good. Um, does anyone have any other ideas or any questions about any of these that are mentioned here? Well, I'm kind of a lame duck to be, to be talking about uh, food. I was... Um, a personal chef for years. And um, there are so many things that I can't have. So if I'm saying, this is really great, I'm also considering if that is in the things I'm allowed to have. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite meal, like in just in general? Um, oh, hands down. Um, I have the original recipe for um, chicken wings, hot wings. Oh. And um, I have to tweak it a little bit, but uh, instead of coating the wings in um, anything, I don't. I use, I use the um, air fryer to cook the wings and then I make up the sauce and that's really one of my favorite things I love that yeah that sounds good I was just I was going to ask you if you use the air fryer and you do man the air fryer is so useful <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't realize you can make so much with it and and it's so quick mm -hmm. it, it really cuts down on the time of things um I also like uh steak cooking and any kind of chicken. Mm -hmm. Well, actually any kind of meat, you could, you could cook on it. And you could like put them in a bag and get a little oil on them if you want to. But um, for the most part, you really don't, don't need much. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, well, if there aren't any more ideas for the Jamboard, I guess we can go ahead and move on. Could I ask one slide. question? Oh, yes. I'm very interested in that salad dressing uh, that would be low salt. Low salt? It has no salt. No? Oh, wow. Yeah, um, the one with the spinach salad um, that I keep make, made up all the time, you all know about Crystal Light, right? Yes. Okay, they have one and it's like mixed fruit. So you put like maybe, it, depends on your, your container, of course, but say um, a half a cup of that and a half a cup, or actually for me, probably not even a, a fourth of a cup uh, of oil. And I use Splenda and the, um, the flavor from the, um, the crystal light just pour it in there and then you shake it all up, put it on your salad. Yummy. 
<laughs> it sounds good. I wouldn't have thought of crystal. There are no, no carbs and no calories. Wow. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And you can use different kinds of oil. I usually use olive oil, um, but I've made it with, with other oils because that wasn't available to me. So it's, that's more of a personal choice. My youngest daughter would pick avocado oil. So it's, you know, it's just whatever you like. I think we're going to have to start a Capital City Village recipe exchange. <laughs> well, I did have a blog when I was in dialysis, and my daughter uh, helped me do it because, of course, I don't know how to do those things. And um, I've been off of dialysis for, I don't know, five, six, maybe seven, I don't remember what year it was, but I was on it for six months. And... Um, during that time, I researched, they have lots of recipes for diabetics. They have lots of recipes for kidney. But what they don't have is for someone who has both. And so I would figure out the recipe, send it to my daughter, and she would post it. And I That's still wonderful. That is wonderful. Because I have kidney and long-term diabetes. Oh, wow. As well as low sodium for the heart. So you give me hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm 81, and I guarantee you that my um, diabetes numbers are as good as it could get. And, and it's, it's, it's just was so easy to do. I would think that it would be really hard to give up of course, I've been on a diabetic diet for years, and that's automatic. But then when you add in the kidney, um, things change, and there's certain things you can't have for this one or that one or whatever. And so I would look it up, and there are still people looking for the blog, but it's gone now. <laughs> My daughter doesn't have time to do it anymore anyway. <laughs> Let's okay. go ahead and go back to the slides. Um, we had some really good ideas for these these recipes. Uh, I'm excited to, to hear all about y'all's all ideas and everything. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we can go ahead and summarize what we've talked about so far. Um, so we talked about how pre-planning meals can make grocery shopping easier and how incorporating multiple food groups into your meals will help you achieve a balanced diet. Be uh, sure to press foods that are nutrient dense and alternate recipes to keep your meal time exciting. See, you've um, put a survey okay, in the chat. In the chat. Okay, great. I will make sure to share that link with uh, attendees afterwards as well but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click over and do it right now, but I'll send it out to everyone afterwards. Oh, okay, great, thank you. Okay. All right, well, folks, thank you so much for giving us the presentation. Uh, are there any questions that uh, anyone has for the group? No, I just want them to know how much I appreciate taking their time because I'm learning and yeah. I'm an old lady and I'm learning new things from both the, the CCV and from, from the students. Thank you so much. Yeah, y'all are doing Thank a great you. job with the presentation and we really appreciate your time and effort in it. Um, I do have one quick question. I had heard that as a rule of thumb, as far as vegetables and so forth, it would be um, priority to go for fresh, then frozen, and then uh, canned. Is there any particular order or is it something where one has more nutrients than the other? Most of the time the recommendation is uh, if you can buy fresh, 
Mm -hmm. um, and then the next option would obviously be frozen, um, depending on your uh, situation, you know, availability and what's around you. Uh, there, it may be beneficial to buy some of those frozen vegetables to get something um, that's maybe not, you know, offered fresh in your area. Um, the canned vegetables are something that people usually think of as not as good. Um, and the overall rule of thumb is that if it's the difference between um, that you'll eat them versus you wouldn't eat them at all, then absolutely go ahead and eat those canned vegetables. And if you're concerned about the sodium in them or something, you know, if, if you have uh, canned fruit and you're concerned about the sugar, then you can always pour that into a strainer and rinse them off, give them a good rinse, and it'll get some of that, that sodium or that, that salt off. Okay, good. Yeah, good tip. I appreciate that. All right. Well, unless there's any other questions, I, I think we'll let you go. But again, thank you so much for the effort and uh, your time this afternoon. We, uh, we certainly did learn something. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Y'all take care. Thank you. Bye.